Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this LG front load washer. The model number it's on the display, but if you can read the model number there is also going to be typed on the description of this video. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The complaint that we have with this washer is that it's not draining. So we're going to go ahead and start a cycle just to be able to get some water inside the washer and then we're going to make a drain to see what happens. There was just a little bit of water there and I can hear the pump that is making like a rattling uh, noise. Also the homeowner said that they was able to get all the water out so at this point we're just gonna go ahead and get um get to the point and find out what it is the first thing you got to do is check that hole make sure no quarters or no nothing is blocking that hole because that hole is a drain hose that is coming from the top the next thing you're going to remove the spring with a needle nose pliers to be able to get the rubber booth loose now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about this uh, repair. The um, homeowner already got all the water out with the little tubing that you see right there. That's a little a little hose where the um, homeowner was able to drain the washer. So you need to get like a flat pan to be able to drain the washer out of the out of that little pipe or remove the filter from the uh, pump which is the black one that you see right there i already have to take it off now you're going to remove the screw and that plastic cover and also this bottom fillet screws that holds the bottom of the uh, whole front panel in place now remember that when you remove that filter the black filter is going to be water so you need to be prepared for water to spill out also disconnect the washer to prevent electric shock now remove the two filler screws from the top um, panel to be able to remove the top panel cover. There's two filler screws. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and slide back the panel to be able to lift it up. As you see right there, I just push it back and it releases from the hooks that I'm gonna show it to you right now. There's a hook right there, that slides right there, and then there's another hook male to female connections in the back and also the front now we're gonna go ahead and remove the filler screws they are holding the um, panel and also the soap and dispenser uh, drawer now we're gonna go ahead and remove the two filler screws they are holding this panel right by the uh, soap and softener i meant softener um drawer and now we're going to go ahead and with our nails our fingers try to pop this front panel out i am sorry but uh, my camera has tilted up and then it's hard to uh, see this footage and also it's a phyllis screws right there on the top right corner now as you see it was a little hard to come out so i'm gonna go ahead and help myself with a screwdriver and i can show you this is the little tops there's some big tops too but it's the little ones the ones are um, attached to this top panel as you see it already come loose it already came loose and now we're going to go ahead and release the wire harness from this um, kind of clamps uh, plastic clamps that holds the harnesses and the wires in place now we're going to go ahead and disconnect these three harness or wire connections however you want to call it now i want you to be careful because these are very sharp edges so just try to be careful with those um, sharp edges go ahead and wear gloves or long sleeves because they can cut you really easy. 
Now I know I'm not using it, but you get the idea. Now you gotta be prepared for water to spill down. Like I was saying early, the homeowner already have drained this machine, but if you remove that filter, like I show you at the beginning of the video, it's gonna be a lot of water coming out. So you need to have a shot vac or have like a flat uh, pan and drain it from the filter of the pump or the little hose. Just go at the beginning of the video for you can see what I'm talking about. Now remove all the fillet screws they are holding the top of this front panel. And we only got one more to go. Make sure you remove that one. I already show you at the beginning, but I just want to make sure you go ahead and remove that one because you might forget. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the harness or the whole um, door switch. Now, I like to just remove the two fillet screws on the front, those two screws, and then release it from there because sometimes the harness and the back is hard to put it back in. So it's your choice if you just want to disconnect the harness right there in the back where you see those wires or remove the two fillet screws right there and push it in. That is your choice. You just have to put those screws back in the uh, uh, door switch when you uh, finish the repair and put it back. Now, this repair got a little complicated for me, and I'm gonna head in, I'm gonna go ahead and um, explain to you how, because you can do this pump in two ways. You can replace only the motor, or you can replace the whole housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you some advices and which one is best. You, you're gonna need a 13, 32 millimeter to be able to remove the three screws that are holding the housing, the um, water pump housing in place. Now, as you see, I use my channel locks to remove the clamp from the top hose, the drain hose. And once you remove the clamp or um, move the clamp up, the hose will come right out, just wiggle it out. Now, once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and remove the three screws. Remember I said you need a 13, 32 millimeter um, drill bit, or I don't know if you guys use a different uh, sizes and then you can just look in your tools which one it will apply to you. In this case, I'm using my drill with an angle um, drill bit, but you can use a screwdriver, you can use a regular drill. If you have a smaller drill, I have a big drill, so I'm using an angle, a 45 angle, a um, drill bit. So if you got just a screwdriver, just use the drill bit and a 1332, and then those are the screws that are gonna come out. They are a total of three screws. They are holding this housing in place. Now this is the, where everything gets interesting because normally what I do, I just replace the motor. In fact, your pump might look a little different because this pump that you see right here, it's already been replaced. And it's three screws that are holding the motor in place. Now it's nothing wrong with the housing. So if nothing is wrong with your housing, you can just replace the motor. It will be more affordable and is easier now when i rep when i replace just the motor you remove those three screws and you remove another three screws from the housing to be able to get the pump out because even if you remove the three fillet screws the metal bracket or the metal housing whatever you want to call it it doesn't let the pump motor come out as you see i removed the total of three screws but the bracket the metal bracket that I'm gonna point it out right now, that metal bracket is not letting the motor come out. So what you can do is remove the, th the three screws that are holding the um, this bracket with the housing and just remove the motor without disconnecting the water the drain hoses that you see right there. In fact, 
We already removed one because it's necessary, but the one in the back is really a pain to remove that uh, drain hose. It's really hard to remove it, and it's really hard to put it back on. So go ahead and remove the three screws. And for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the back hose just to show you the other two screws that you can remove, but don't, I'm telling you, if you only replacing the uh, drain pump, do not remove the back uh, drain hose that you see that is still attached. Those are the two fillet screws. And at this point, I already have decided that I was gonna go ahead and remove the two screws and, and, and do it that way because I've done it a thousand times before. But at this point, I changed my mind because I wanted to show you guys for the video, for this video and how it looks, the whole housing, when you replace the pump with the whole housing. And this is where my nightmare it starts beginning. Now, the problem with that back hose is that it's really flimsy, it's real thin, and it's hard to put it back on. As you see, it was kind of easy to get it um, loose and sometimes not even that go ahead and disconnect the two wire nuts they are holding um, they are in the uh, drain pump however like I said this pump has already been replaced for an aftermarket pump and yours might look a little different but the repair and the procedure is basically the same go ahead and notice where your wire nuts and your wire was pointed out this is the other two fillet screws that I'm telling you that you have to remove there are a total of three I already removed one from the front if you remember earlier so if you rem if you remove these two screws in place you don't need to remove the back hose the back uh flimsy hose which is the one can give you a lot of trouble now if you run into this situation I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, solve that too as you can see this is the problem with this pump the blade has broke from the motor and that why it was making a rattling noise and it wasn't draining the water at all so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the new motor there's gonna be a link in the description of this video there's gonna be a part number there as well and also it's gonna be the model number of these machines because you cannot really tell the model number on the beginning of the video for this washer Okay, now this is what I'm saying. Over here, I'm a little lost because I forgot uh, where I had the um, wires pointed or located, I mean. And you can put it however you want, but you just gotta make sure that the wires are not gonna be too tight when you put it back on. So just look for the best way for the uh, wires to be located or just follow this video. Just notice where I had to point them at before I remove it and after I install it. Again, guys, if you can avoid to, re to remove the whole housing, go ahead and do. But if you have this problem and that drain hose is leaking after you replace the motor or the whole motor with the housing and you got it on to avoid remove the whole uh, panels to take uh, to avoid to uh, disassemble the machine again which is going to be very very hard again go ahead and tilt the machine back and do it from underneath I'm going to go ahead and address that more as you saw in that footage right there I installed the three screws they are holding the drain pump in place remember the drain pump has a gasket you might see it on the footage and that gasket has to be sit in place as well that way it doesn't leak from the pump as well and those three screws they are holding the motor in place um they need to be tight and i would prefer for you guys to do it with a screwdriver and not with a drill because you can over tighten it in a strip because remember it's plastic so now if you didn't see earlier the video um how do i remove it from the housing i'm gonna go ahead and show you right now there are a total of three screws. They are holding this um, housing to the bracket in place. And 
I know that in some footage, you know, my camera tilted up, so I apologize for that. But, you know, I got this GoPro on my forehead, and then, you know, it's kind of difficult. I'm trying to, you know, get the best footage for you. And I'm sorry if the camera is moving too much, but about that, it is nothing much I can do. Anyway, guys, if this video helped you in any ways, go ahead and before I forget, I want to go ahead and invite you to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. That way you do recommend this video to more to help more people. I will really appreciate that. And here is with everything that I'm telling you guys. It starts happen um to put this pump back in place is a little bit of hustle and those rubbers that came off the bracket or metal housing um they they came off again inside some of them and i have to put it back in there but i'm gonna go, go ahead and try to leave most of the footage here the way you guys can see i took me about two hours to do this um, repair because of the complications but you just have to be patient because um, and like in my case I didn't have much space that's why I couldn't give you better footage but I did the best I can and as you can see I was struggling trying to get the clamp with the hose and the pump housing and it was just not possible because the clamp is really strong. Another solution and in, in this frustrate you enough is go to Home Depot and buy a two inch or two and a half inch adjustable uh, clamp where you can just put it in there and go ahead and adjust it with a uh, one quarter or a 516 screwdriver. That's another solution. But at this point, I was just trying to get going. I really believe I have more clamps in the truck but that would be a, a way to the truck it was raining and then you know i was keep hoping that i get this right long story short after i got everything done this uh drain hose started leaking my camera go ahead and um my camera was low battery it didn't got that on the footage but I was able to tilt it. I didn't have to take the whole machine apart and that's why I'm telling you guys, if you have any leaks, try to tilt the washer, have somebody to help you that way the washer doesn't fall on you. Always be careful, you know, have somebody to help you and, you know, be caution and go ahead and uh, try to see where it's leaking from, from underneath and that will um, help you not to get them, uh, disassemble the machine again because like I said it's uh, just a lot of a lot of work now as you can see I'm trying to use my vice grip to pre um, press the clamp and it's just impossible I'll fast forward this footage but you know it was still a long time right there and this is what I'm saying I got to the point that it looks beautiful, it looks like it's good, but in the bottom it was all twisted. You will see in a minute how I was able to get it in place. And the problem is that it's so flimsy, it's not hard at all. So it was like every time I tried to put it away, it was bent underneath or in the side where it was going sideways, it was just a nightmare. So. The reason why I leave all this footage, guys, because I, I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. However, um, I take it apart because I wanted to show you guys a better footage and how it's attached to the housing in the metal uh, bracket. So you guys have an idea and how to deal with it. But try to not disconnect the back uh, drain hose because, like I said, you will regret it. And if you do, yes, take my advice on how to solve that issue. Go from underneath, make sure it's, the clamp is good on the bottom. Or just, you know, twist the pump because right there, I'm going to swear that the drain uh, clamp, I mean the drain hose and the clamp was in place the way it's supposed to. At this point, I'm connecting the two wire uh, terminals 
on the pump, which is the um, power supply. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the top drain hose. This one is a little more accessible, so it's not a big deal, but it's still, if you don't have a channel locks or vice grips, it can turn to another nightmare as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to put the bottom bracket, the bottom uh, drain pump support, where it should be to be able to install the three screws that you see on the left that holds the pump and bracket in place. As you see, one of those rubber um, supports came off and I'm trying to put it back in place. It, I'm telling you guys, it's just a process. I mean, and it took me this much, about an hour, an hour and a half, because all the complications, and I do this every day. The only issue that I have here, it was that it was a very um, limited space. I didn't have much, much space to work with. And that's the reason why um, the footage as well, they're not that good, but you get the idea. Right now I'm just preparing my angle which is, I believe it's a 45 angle um, drill bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and install the three screws that supports the uh, pump, like I mentioned before. Now this one in the back, just, you know, trying to fill it with your fingers because you will not be able to see what you're doing. But uh, it didn't give me any trouble in this scenario. That little uh, tubing that you see there, that's the drain pump. It has like a little cap on the uh, on the tip and that's how you can drain the the washer as well. And as you can see, I also remove the um, the harness. I end up removing the harness. I don't know why I was thinking that I remove the uh, the whole switch, but um, normally I don't do that because that harness sometimes it's hard to remove it and try to put it back on. So I apologize for that. I thought I remove. I prefer to remove the two Phillips screws on the front for that um, door switch and just let it fall inside and then just put it back so just keep in mind you can do it either way if it's hard to remove that mm -hmm. harness uh, behind that door switch just go ahead and remove the two filler screws in the front let it fall inside and then when you put it back when you put the, the this uh, front panel back in place just put it back and re install the two filler screws I found out easier now we just put in the rubber booth in place because it has like a male to female slack right there where it has to be um, fit in there. That way the wire with the spring that goes around it secures the rubber booth in place. So otherwise it's just gonna keep falling in and it will be leaks everywhere. So once you got it in place, this is another thing that it can run into a nightmare if you don't have nobody to help you. Something as simple as this uh, spring. They also build a, a special tool that I do have it, but I hate to use it because, you know, I feel like I shouldn't be spending too much time. As you see, I got it in place and then it did came off on me. You have to, as you see on the, on the left, it, the rubber is coming off. I mean, it's just a pain because the spring is really, really strong. Now it came off, put it back again. Now look what I'm gonna do to be to pre uh, prevent from this happening. I put my finger underneath of the spring and have my son holds the other part. 
Now I put the spring underneath and put my needle nose underneath and pull into it and falls in place. All this little detail, guys, can save you from a headache, um, struggle, and things like that. And all this little trick took me took me a little while to learn and try to do all these things um, fast to be able to move to the next uh, repair. You already know how you remove all the screws. Just put all the screws back where you remove them. And that's very self-explanatory. Or just go back. I just fast forward it because this video is already long. And I don't want to go ahead and bore you guys. But you can always put the video in a minus two and low speed or whatever. If you guys want to watch with details again. Or just go to the beginning of the video and watch how I disassemble. Just watch the video a couple times, guys, because, you know, to prevent from make mistakes and, and or, you know, get hurt or anything like that. Like the, those sharp edges, just try to wear gloves and things like that because you can easy cut yourself in those sharp edges, like I mentioned before. At this point, I'm just installing the screws that I removed at the beginning. Just put everything back where it was. There's a filler that I, I missed it both times in that corner. That one, I don't think you were not supposed to move the one in the middle, but I did it by mistake. Now the two filler screws, they holds the drawer. Make sure that it's grabbing the bucket that you see right there on the um, drawer. Those two screws holds the uh, drawer bucket in place. Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, top panel. And remember, that's very self-explanatory. They have to fit in those hooks. Push it forward um, towards you. And then install the two filler screws in the back. And make sure that the top panel is secure in place. At this point, we're pretty much done. Again, guys, if this video helped you in any way, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and comment down below how this video helped you with your repair. As you can see, I was getting a little bit of water there, but my GoPro was start going low battery. So the machine started working fine. It was draining, no issues whatsoever, but it has a little leak. So I go ahead and move the machine forward, tilt it and adjust the drain holes that I told you about in this video a lot because I don't want you guys to run into the same situation that I did. And that's it. Thanks for watching.